And on the Small EV Project, I'm be talking to James Nicolaitis from HRM Web. Today on the Small EV Project, I'm with James Nicolaitis from HRM Web. How are you today, James? Great, thanks, Tony. That's good to hear. HRM Web, tell us what it is you do. What's HRM Web all about? Um, well, HRM Web um, I was born out of uh, as, a, as a Unity project, okay. um, uh, building a software solution for, for businesses to use to manage their staff resources. Um, the whole point of it is to enable businesses to get their time and money back. Right. Um, and so that way, they're providing tools around managing their workforce so that um, so that's quick and easy, and again, transparency of what's going on in their business um, and things like that. Okay. So, what type of business is it aimed at? All businesses, or are you looking at a business of a certain size? What type of business yeah. are you there to help? Yeah. So typically, we deal with um, many many different industries around. Casual workforces that right. operate casual workforces. Um, we also do um, permanent part time and full time workforces, but industries such as uh, childcare, hospitality, retail, pharmacy, security, medical, okay. all those kind of um, uh, those kind of industries where they, they have potentially remote um, remote uh, staff um, on site as well as uh, in, internal at different sites in, within the business. Right, okay. So I noticed you've got the, the sign next to you, sort of easy, easy employer, and there's a whole lot of different things that you, that, that incorporates. Um, how is this a different type of payroll system or a, an employee management system compared to just, you know, clocking in, clocking out? Okay. Yeah, so the, the benefits, um, uh, yeah, the benefits in, in, with a system like easy employer, um, it, Basically, revolve around the fact that it's a complete solution, so it okay. handles rostering through to through to payroll in right. the in the one solution. So, the benefits that provides uh, mean that there's a transparency across the whole process, yep. and things can be um, um, accountable at each point. So, you get things like rostering happening, and then um, and then timesheet management happening. And timesheets are, are built around um, fingerprint clocking, for example. Oh, okay, it keeps the staff accountable to the hours that they're meant to be working in the business. That's pretty pretty high tech. Really <laughs> you, know, you come across people who, um, you know, generally the younger workforce will have used that kind of technology at things like working in retail, like right. uh, you know, Woolworths, for example. It's quite common technology. It's come a long way. It's quick yep. and easy to use, and it's accurate now. So. Okay, oh, that's interesting. Sounds sounds, uh, sounds pretty good. Um, let's get into some of the questions I've got here for you, James. Uh, why did you go into business? I think you alluded to it a little bit before about being a, a bit of a uni project that's yeah. uh, turned into a business, is that sort of the, where it came from or? Yeah, a little bit before that, um, I actually worked in retail for many years, about right. 10 years I think, and um, during that time I realised there's actually a, a place for me in actually providing IT support services to, to pharmacies, which was the retail environment I worked in, so okay. I just kind of broke, born a, a initial business from there, yeah. um, and then I knew people through school and university, and that uh, sort of um, born the whole idea of me joining the um, the HR and web team. Right. Um, so was the product, you know, the product of managing the the whole people thing? Did that come about your retail experience of seeing that as a as a potential gap because it wasn't done very well? Or yeah. So um, a lot of the I feel a lot of the aspects of the system um, I've drawn upon my knowledge of how staff are managed in in retail yep. um, and in my experience with business in general. And uh, we factor that into the design and the features of the product. So it's quite, okay. uh, you know, for, um, for example, pharmacy is a primary industry for us, and it, we've got quite a few pharmacy clients. So right. that kind of uh, dwells on that point a bit. Hmm. Okay, interesting. Um, if you had to start all over again, would you do anything differently? Um, a few things. Uh, more of a focus on clear, um, clear strategy and, and uh, sort of end goal. Right. Um, more, uh, on. Um, yeah, so more strategy related stuff, more time spending on educating myself, a bit more, more focused on that, right. and generally just spending a bit more time balancing my um, my work and um, um, personal life right. to, to keep things um, level and, yep. and yep. Um, things like that. Okay, so did you sort of go into business with a with an idea and sort of didn't have the plan and the plans eventually evolved? Is that what you've That's done? Right. Yeah. yeah. And then, and you're, not, you're not the only one. Yeah, <laughs> that's the way it is. Absolutely. Many businesses go like that, I'm sure. Definitely, definitely. Um, how about your biggest challenge so far, Jones? What's your, your current challenge or yes. past challenge? We're in a high growth phase at the moment, so right. there's a big challenge there. Um, we've 
um, we've dealt with a whole lot of challenges before and now dealing with a whole new set of challenges and that involves around managing the growth of the business right. Right? because we're getting a lot of people coming on board and how do we how do we manage that with the limited resources and money that we have available yeah. yep. and being able to balance the different focus areas of the business so that's all even we're growing in each area like development um, sales and, and service delivery making sure they're all coherent moving forward okay um, correct me if I'm wrong but it looks like your your particular product is is one that could be pretty much used globally it could be used anywhere so is that a part of the plan for you at the moment in that whole growth phase? Or are you focusing on Canberra or Australia? Or what's what's the focus and what's the potential for you? Our focus has uh, been very much Canberra to date. So, right. um, we have picked up clients all around, um, especially in the last two or three years, we've picked up clients around Australia. Yep. We have started picking up clients internationally now. Okay. Um, it's not a focus area for us, though. Uh, we sort of just, they just came along and we, okay. um, one of them happens to own, one of the companies we deal with here in Australia actually happens to own uh, businesses in New Zealand, for example, right, and that's right. how that came about. So, um, and is it the same product? Is it like yeah. you have to tweak anything to customize locally, or is there always customization depending on the business? There will be customization. Right. We need, make, need to make further. Um, that's another set of challenges to yeah. face as well before we hit the fully hit the international market. Okay. So. Then you can start looking at all different languages. Then like, always, uh, always fun. fun <laughs> <laughs> um, how do you balance working on? You touched on this before, but how do you balance working on the business and in the business? Um, it's very important to set aside time. I, well, I feel, and it's what I've learned, is to set aside time to to uh, to do those focus kind of focused strategy kind of uh, activities. Um, yeah. We we meet quite regularly to focus on the the high level stuff, the mm-hmm. stuff that's going to real, add real value to the business yeah. in the long term. Because um, you could probably get distracted by the day to day, and there's always something to do. Yeah. Um, but you have got to make time, and that's yeah, what it comes totally. down to. Okay, and is that something that you've uh, modified and, and do a lot better now than what you did in the past? Because I've said, yeah, and it's you know comes from inexperience to be a little more experienced and getting support and, and sure. advice around that. And, and yep. Okay, excellent. And my last question for you, James, you'll be glad to hear. Uh, what advice would you have for potential new people coming into business? Um, yeah, so one thing that I I meet a lot of people entering into the business workforce, and a lot of things that I kind of tell, tell them are around. Um, making sure you surround yourself with people who are like-minded and yep. people who are gonna support you because um, it's an emotional roller coaster ride being a business and to keep that moving forward and to keep it level, you yep. need that support and uh, you also need to branch your networks out so that you gain um, more exposure to more people and that brings on more business Definitely. and uh, enables you to grow as well. Um, also things like um, making sure that you deal with you know, the, the things that you skip in the early stages, making sure you spend time on addressing those and um, into the future, so yep. that way you know you're not going to be left with a whole big, um, you know, in the space of technology, you might be left with a big product that doesn't work cohesively sure. in the end. So you've got to be careful around that and addressing those things you may have overlooked or even skipped on purpose at yeah. the start. Yep. Um, and it, personal life and business life balance is very important too. So being healthy mentally and physically, yep, yep. as well as growing your career and education, it's all a balance. Yep. It's very important. It's quite easy to get drawn into just getting stressed out and doing those daily um, tasks and not working on other aspects. But yep. you know, I found that being much more product, productive if you do get that physical nature of getting out and exercising yep. and things like that. Yep. You, know, you might do 100, you know, 100 hours in a week and you only achieve eighty percent efficiency. Yeah, yeah, yeah. If you, you did eighty hours and yeah. achieve hundred percent. Absolutely, absolutely. No, good, good advice, James. Good advice. All right, James. Look, thank you very much for your time today. Uh, certainly, a lot of interesting uh, bits of advice based on your experiences along the way. And I look forward to seeing HRM become a, a global brand in the future. Yeah, thanks very much, Tony. Thanks, James.